Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Courtney. And um, how are you, Courtney? You know, this week has been one for the books. In a good sense, I think, though. Um, first and foremost, I have an announcement to make because this comes out, this comes out January 15th. Yes. Excellent. So <clears throat> today, as this comes out, if you're listening, at 4 p.m. Eastern, we are doing a streaming on Zoom or in person if you're in NYC um, of a table read of a new play that we are helping to produce for Unseen Artists. Um, it is donation based, but you have to donate at least a dollar because our tickets are through Eventbrite and it doesn't let you do it with zero dollars i don't know you might get do 50 cents i just tried a dollar to see if it worked um because zero dollars didn't but it'd be really cool we're looking to get feedback for um the playwright and it's a really cool play about a manic disorder um basically the um character is going through a manic episode describing his bipolar and how they end um they end it with like how you can overcome anything if you have the right friends that kind of help guide you through. It's a really nice. cool play. Um, anyways, so I like that. that's my announcement. You have what time does this come out on Sunday? Like, um, if I'm on my shit, six a.m. So you have ten hours to prepare if you listen to this when it comes out, which would be nice of you. And yeah, again, yeah. suggestion base is four to six on Sunday. Nobody's doing anything then, so that's fine. Um, anyways, I'll be at work, but <clears throat> that's fine. Um, but me as a person, I, I'm good. I, I did a lot of me things this week, yes. um, which was really nice and needed. Um, I went to, um, I, well, on Wednesday, I got tickets to see, what did I see on Wednesday? Oh my God. What's about to close? Oh, take me out. Okay. Dude, that show is so good. Wildly inappropriate, but very good, very good. And I bought like I bought my first mm. Agatha Christie novel, and so I bought the first one in the Perot series. And I just went to a bar and had a drink. And then Friday, I went and saw Top Dog Underdog because it closed yesterday, and it was also very good. And I went inside a bar that day and had espresso martinis, drafted a cover letter because I'm looking to do some new freelance stuff as opposed to working 60 hours between two jobs right now because I'm exhausted. Um, yeah. So I just had a lot of me time and planning and preparing and relaxing in theater. So it was wonderful. Um, how are you? I um, did not have as lovely a week as you did. Um, after we finished recording last Monday, um, which by the time you listen to this, is such old news. Um, but um, I was really, I literally ended our Bates episode by talking about how I had to go watch the football game. Um, for those of you who don't closely follow football, the game that I left to watch um, was the Bills Bengals game where um, one of our players uh, basically died on the field. Um, he had a cardiac arrest and was getting CPR on the field on live national television for nine minutes. Um, so uh, for, I don't know, the 15th time in the last nine months, the entire city of Buffalo was like an emotional crisis. Um, I think it was like a lot of people of the world too, because that's traumatic to witness. It was, it was, yeah, it was traumatic to witness and but like in Buffalo, like we had the shooting in May. Um, Kim Pagula, who owns our sports teams, um, has cancer um, and has been fighting it. I think it's cancer. I know she's very sick. I think it's cancer. She's been fighting that all year. Um, we had the, um, obviously the blizzard. We had actually two blizzards in the last two months. I think we've had like three house fires where multiple, multiple people died. Um and then we had this, and it was just like, this city can't take anymore. We're not um, a huge city. Yeah, and it is. It's like, 
if you think about like six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon, everyone in Buffalo is two degrees of separation. Like no, it's, it's not a big enough city for us to like collectively feel all of this. And like, I was watching a TikTok where um, someone was talking about that. She discovered something recently that was like really heartbreaking. And it was because she Googled trauma responses in teachers and absolutely everything she found on the internet was how teachers respond to trauma in their classrooms. And there's nothing, nothing on the internet about how to help teachers who are traumatized by the fact that that is what we do every day is trauma response. Right. So so it's been an emotional week. Um, Tuesday, I went to my chiropractor. Turns out my butt is not broken. It is just very, very badly bruised. Um, And it's healing and I have good days and bad days. Today is not a good day. Um, But also on top of all of that, um, I had, you could probably tell from the episodes last week that I had a little bit of a sinus infection happening because of the fact that it was negative 25 degrees and then five days later, 60 degrees. Um, So I had a sinus infection, a bruised tailbone, and I got my period. And so Wednesday, Dan and I had a date night scheduled and it was literally, he made me soup and we graded papers on opposite sides of the room because I couldn't function as a human being. (laughs) So it's been a week. Um, I am surviving is what I'm doing. No, you're doing great though. Uh, Thanks. I'm I'm getting there. Um, but today actually it's January 9th for those of you who care to know, um, it's my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Gabby. She doesn't listen to my fucking podcast. Um, she's not the one who cares about us. Um, but also... Damar Hamlin did get released from the hospital and brought back to Buffalo today. So, which is wonderful. Fantastic news. And we're in the playoffs. You're like leading the playoffs to be fair. Yeah. Okay, we are the number we're the number 2 seed in the AFC. We won our division, we didn't win our conference, but unfortunately, the thing about it is because they never rescheduled the Bengals and Bills game. We only yeah. have 17 games for the season instead of 18 or no 16 instead of 17, whatever the number is. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, they added one this year to make it 17. So yes. Oh, cause there's 18 weeks in a bye. So you should have 17 games. We only have 16. So it goes based off win percentage. So we like are just slightly screwed out of being the number one seed because if we had won the Bengals game and won the Patriots game, we could have beat um kansas city for the number one spot um but they also changed the rules of the entire nfl because of it and if the Bengals and the bills are playing the afc championship game neither of us get home field advantage yeah which is (laughs) bananas and cincinnati beat the ravens yesterday and so they are the number three seed, so they are going all the way with us. So, oh, I mean, you kind of saw that coming. Well, for sure, but like, but also, it's just like I'm glad that the Jaguars this, are in the playoffs. That's so weird. Like, if I'm glad that the, that if this had to happen, it was Cincy that it happened with because like we yeah. have a weird we have a weird like copacetic relationship with the Cincinnati Bengals because um five years ago when the Bills broke their playoff drought and went to the playoffs for the first time um since the 90s we won we went into the playoffs because the Bengals won a game that we needed them to win right and um when all the stuff was happening with Andy Dalton's brother being sick Mm -hmm. um the Bills were like huge parts of supporting Andy and like I think that's what it was. There was something going on with Andy's family that like we were part of helping and and they uh, were part of. And the, so since he and Buffalo have always like, there's a shirt that I wanted, like I put it online that I wanted it five years ago. And then I popped up on my time hop this week. And I was like, Oh my God, because it's a picture of a tiger and a Buffalo, like a bison, like hugging each other. That's adorable. Yeah. So like, 
We're rooting for Cincy. So I'm fine with yeah. them winning if the Bills can't be the ones to do it. Yeah. I mean, I think the beauti- most beautiful like thing in the whole wide world would be if the AFC championship game is Buffalo versus Cincinnati. Yeah. Like, I want somebody to destroy Kansas City in the divisional round so that we can face Cincinnati in – except for that I don't think that's possible. I don't think it is either. It's not because Cincinnati's the number three seed, so we would, if we both win, we face them in the divisional round. Right. Damn. It's okay. They just can't win the Super Bowl. I don't think also can't win the conference because we have to win the conference. Right. They also can't win the conference, but on a <laughs> higher scale. <laughs> right. I um. don't want to win the, the Super Bowl either. Yeah. Um, now that we've bored everyone to death about sports and I've almost started crying already, um, Courtney, why don't you give us some words of affirmation and peace? Well, I had forgotten. But I did, that is, so I I was glad you chose to talk about sports because that gave me a little time to catch myself up. Good. Um, And and I cared. I cared about the sports too, but also it gave me time to catch up. So don't be so hard on yourself. You didn't make a mistake and you're not a failure. You gave it your all and it didn't work. That's life, baby. That's just life. Let go, move on, and keep on keeping on. That's amazing. Isn't it though? I love it. That's what I got to remember, like, every other day. Um, You know what I need to remember? And that TV in the 90s (laughs) was not what it is today. No, very, very different things. Um, So I went to go watch this episode yesterday. And I was at Dan and Doug's and I was going to go lock myself in the bedroom to watch it because Doug was in the middle of watching something else. And he goes, are you watching the season two finale? And I said, yeah. And he said, if it was a good episode, I'd offer to finish this up and watch it with you. And I was like, yeah, I know. (laughs) No, 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 because I knew what episode it was. And I was like, I just can't get over the fact that they in season two decided to end the season with a clip show he was like it's probably one of the worst decisions they ever made Um, so that's the energy i went into the episode with Mm -hmm. that is not the energy i went in with i was stoked i was ready i was like we are gonna get something's gonna happen so we can move forward to a new season i mean to be fair something happened so that we could move forward to a new season but like 20 seconds of something happened. Right. I was like, there was about three viable minutes of this episode. Right. Right. And um, I, and you, we know, I don't hate a clip show like everyone else does. This one was terrible. This is not one of the better ones. No. Um, yeah. I mean, I do hate a clip show. I know. Um, but <laughs> I particularly hate a poorly done clip show. Yes. Yes. Um, so we are talking about Stargate SG1 season two, episode 22, Out of Mind. It was rated 7.2 stars. A little high. Which is a little high. <laughs> um, it aired on March 12th, 1999. We have the same number one song, the same number one movie, and the same number one book. Great. We also have absolutely nothing interesting that happened in the news for the you entire time. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, it was uh, directed by Martin Wood, who is returning. Um, the story was by Jonathan Glasner and Brad Wright. The teleplay was by Jonathan Glasner. The editor was Tor Alexandra Valenza. And if you didn't know it was a clip show, you would have looking at the IMDb because there's about 15 (laughs) people that it says with excerpts by. I didn't write all their names down because it's just everyone we had in this season. Right. (laughs) That makes sense. Um, I do love that it's like not one new person on our like creative team and it sucks. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> a, yeah. Literally, it's the same story editor. It's the same writer, the same director. Like we are with our core yeah. four. Like Martin Wood, I mean, Jonathan Glassner, Brad Wright, and Tor- Alexander Valenza. That's our like core four for season two. Be better. Do better. Um, the guest star that I'm going to talk about is Tom Butler. Tom Butler is known for Freddy vs. Jason. He is known for the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Um, (laughs) The new ones? Yep. He was in an absolute dump truck worth of Hallmark movies. But what I I personally know him from, what I recognized him from immediately... Um, what I recognize his name from and what concerns me about how quickly I recognized him is that he played a secret or an FBI agent in the 2003 cult classic film Josie and the Pussycats. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, that's an excellent film. It is. He's, he's the FBI agent who arrests um, Ellen Cummings' character in the end of the movie. That's so funny. Yeah, and I literally was like, oh, yeah, duh, it's Agent Kelly. And then I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I definitely recognized him when I saw him, but I, like, couldn't place him. But I've also seen... Oh, he's been in so many things that, like, I didn't even bother writing down what most of them were. But, like, he is one of those guys that just, like plays an FBI never- agent or a cop or the mayor in like every fucking thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, and unfortunately with that very, very sparse intro, I now have to go into this episode. I literally look to make sure because again, um, Stargate announcement. <laughs> Season seven and eight are on Amazon. The rest are still on Pluto TV. Okay, listen. This it's not even just that. This is how absolutely fucking asinine this is. This timeline. We recorded our last episode from Christmas break on December 12th. On December 19th, they announced that they were pulling Stargate from Amazon. It disappeared from Amazon on December 30th. We announced our episode where we real like real like our episode where we were talking about it being on Amazon came out on January 1st. On January 2nd, we recorded an episode apologizing that we had missed the boat on the Amazon thing. On January 6th, I get a notification that Stargate is back on Amazon and I take a picture so I have proof that every single season was on Amazon. On January 8th, I published an episode with, or I I posted the episode Saturday night. So on January 7th, I published an episode with a disclaimer in the description as a caveat that it is back on Amazon. On January 8th, I go to watch the episode and it's off of Amazon again. I'm going to lose my goddamn mind if they move this thing one more time. Like, thank fucking God I have the DVDs because I am going to lose my shit. Well, I almost did. But uh, I did get really confused then because I had... Oh, I have to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, um, beautiful. Thank you. That was very delayed, I felt like. Um, but I... Uh, yeah, so I went to look for it, and because I had, like, jumped around so much, I was at Stargate with only season seven and eight, and then I was at Stargate on Pluto, and then there was Stargate TV on Pluto, and then there's Stargate, and I was going through everything, I was like, did I pick the wrong version of Stargate to pick episode, the finale of season two? Because, like, I don't recognize one person here, Correct. and I had to, like, back out and go back in, and I was like, no, no, it's not me. <laughs> this time it yeah. wasn't no, no. Um, you were unfortunately correct in the episode you chose. Um, we begin with a bunch of random people we have never seen before taking a cryo for a season finale. Right. Um, also, it's a room that we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're taking a cryo tank out and unfreezing the person in it. 
we have not seen cryotechnology on the show yet either. No. So like, it's just a big fat fucking shit show of what are we watching? Right. And it's like, it's the season finale. You should introduce this many new things in a season finale. Um, don't worry. That's about where the new ends. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're right. Um, <laughs> It's Jack in the cryo tank, and they tell him that everyone else is dead, and that it is the year um, 2077. Mm-hmm. And then we get the credits. First of all, shortest opening before yeah. the credits ever. Second of all, the fuck? Um, so- My call is if I had been watching this in 1999 and i saw this opening scene my next thought would have been that jack was the only one cryogenically frozen and he was being taken off the show and this was how they were doing it because they advanced him to 2077 and everyone else was still in the present and that would have been kind of an interesting way if they were going to take him off the show without immediately killing him i don't hate that thought at all um unfortunately that's also not what they do no either no um so they say he's been in a cryogenic hibernation for 79 years um and that apparently hammond and fraser thought it would be bad to unfreeze him because they didn't have the right technology um he was apparently shipped back to sg1 already frozen and george and janet could not fathom unfreezing him without the correct technology Truthfully, that story doesn't entirely not check out. Right. It just also doesn't entirely check out. Because I could see them being like, we can't do this while we don't have the correct top technology. And then devoting the entire resources of the entire SGC to finding the correct technology. Right. Um, so Jack wants to walk around, find out what's going on. So they take him on a walk around through the base and it all looks exactly like SGC. And so he's very confused. Um, he's like, he hears um, somebody call um, like over the announcements. They say that SG 22 is getting ready for a mission. And um, he is like, man, how many SG teams are there? Um, so we do know This is the only random piece of information that I found uh, necessary to write in this. We do know that in modern day, current 1999 Stargate, there are more than 15 SG teams because we have talked about SG-15, but there are less than 22 because SG-22 shocks in. Mm -hmm. So. (laughs) Which is not a huge difference for, you know, 80 years. Sorry, I've (laughs) <laughs> made noise on my phone my bad <laughs> um but so apparently there are 28 sg teams on earth and 10 more on uh colonized planets yeah. um, i just major- i wanted this to be more shocking because it seemed like it was meant to be this is 80 years yeah and that's like that's all you did in 80 years? Because I'm pretty sure we accomplished those same things in the, like, first five years. I understand we're not in the first five years yet, but those feel okay. like reasonable, like, reaches for, like, the first five years with SG-1. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know. But also, like, it kind of feels, like, antithetical to what um, SG-1 stands for, or, like, what SGC stands for, because they don't really seem to be super pro colonizing. Right. Um, especially when you take into like consideration, the dialogue that they've had about other colonial forces, including the American government, like that just feels not correct. Mm-hmm. If they had 10 off world colonies that were like actual and the way that they said it, cause they didn't call them colonies. What did they call them? They did. They said off world colonies. Oh, yeah. And then that's a problem. <laughs> and because, like, having an off world, like, military base or, like, an off world, like, liaison place, yeah. like, the way the ISS is for all the 
astronauts is very different, like politically and militarily than an off-world colony. Right. Right. And that just feels like we wouldn't do that. Absolutely. And by we, I mean SGC, not like me as a human. (laughs) I mean, Um, I also probably wouldn't do that as a human. No, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't either. um, But I I don't have any control over the military choices of the SGC. Um, But based on the other things that they have done and fought for and like attacked, unless somehow um, Senator Fuckface somehow became in charge of the whole thing or that one colonel guy mayborn Um, unless mayborn (laughs) is in charge of all of sgc we're not colonizing right right oh kinsey that's the senator the actual senator's name Mm -hmm. um so then major t who i cannot remember what he introduced himself as he had a name um it started with a t i don't remember what it was but it is agent kelly so i just called him major t the whole time um he says that the rest of the team was sent back already dead. Yeah. Um, uh, but, haha, there is a new technology that has been developed in the last 80 years that can help Jack remember what happened in the past. Okay, but unless I had a fever dream, did we not do a similar thing with Sam's memories mm-hmm. when we were trying to figure out what she knew about um, when she got... What's his, what's their face? Jolinar? Jolinar. Um, Not the exact same, obviously, but didn't we do something mm, similar? Where um, she could like, visualize what she was seeing in her head? She could, but no one else could see it. But, like, that's the only difference? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like, dream projection, that, to be fair, memory projection... If that technology exists right now, I would fucking use it all the time to prove to these fucking people that the things that they have said to me, they said to me. Because let me tell you the number of times that people try to gaslight me into saying that I don't remember shit correctly. And like, I fuck things up a lot, but my mem- but my memory is impeccable. Yeah. I have a terrible memory, so I just assume they told me and I forgot whether they did or not. No, I remember everything. Which is how I know that Dan and I did not have a conversation about a staple of stapler, even though he still swears it must have happened. <laughs> um, but no, my my memory is fantastic. He says he has a terrible memory, but then he remembers weird, tiny details about me that I don't even remember telling him. So, like, his memory's not as bad as he thinks he is. It is, well, which is why I still don't know how this conversation... I also have these weird memories. Like, I'll remember something that happened, like, six months ago at like 2 a.m one time but i couldn't tell you what i did like three hours ago probably so like maybe he has a memory similar to mine where it's like terrible and if you ask me to remember something it's not gonna happen or to recall something it's not gonna happen but if you want something random i can or maybe he's just like obsessed with me Mm, you know i bet that's what it is i mean to be fair i'm obsessed with him too so like that makes it sound like i'm really vain but like it's totally mutual but no, I think he's just obsessed with me because um, for Christmas, he got me a snow globe with llama in it. And I, the last time I mentioned collecting snow globes was definitely before we started dating. But wasn't the llama like pun, like the first? No, that was a rhino. But no, this Christmas, oh. llamas, like I've always had a thing for llamas. It's like weird. Um, but like this Christmas, my... Um, classroom door was follow la la llama oh that's right <laughs> and i have like one of my favorite students i tell him he looks like a llama all the time and like so i have a one of the pun papers said follow la la llama and that's hanging up in my classroom too and i just like um i have a pet llama like a pet llama for our classroom my classroom it was before i got a real pet our class pet was this stuffed llama that's named lance because our school um mascot is a lancer so lance the llama is my class mascot so like llamas have just been like a thing so the llama part wasn't the thing i was surprised he remembered it was the snow globe part was the thing i was surprised he remembered Um, so anyway we're gonna see into jack's memories and (laughs) surprise surprise we'll do so by having a clip show Yay. Um, the Chokra apparently gave them this device that will help project what the mind is seeing. And um, I did not take 
notes about the clip show except for to tell you what the clips were because I don't fucking care to repeat them again. They did note that we're still friends with the Tokra, which was good news to Jack. Yes. Yes. Um, so Jack's first memory is of the Knox, but he says that he they wouldn't have fought the Gawul even if their life depended on it, so it couldn't have been them. Um, then he has memories of Asgard defeating Harur, and when they went and when he went to the Asgard planets to explain the alliance, um, and then he explains the alliance to Major T by having a flashback of the meeting room with the four races. Yeah, I literally I put uh, I, at first I was like, did we already do this memory thing with Sam? And then I said, oh, the Knox, yay! And then I put, oh, Asgard. So we're just like full recapping and then i was like yeah i was like just trying to detail i was like yep we're doing all of this theoretically yes. it was so he could like go back and figure out what he didn't had forgotten about being cryogenically frozen but that he didn't yeah. do anything like for yeah. really yeah um but then the creepy people at this point i decided they were creepy people um i mean i kind of thought they were to begin with um because they have like kind of plasticky looking faces I just, I didn't trust them. I didn't understand. Yeah. Um, but the creepy people uncryo Daniel, who is, fun fact, not dead. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then Sam, and they say that they have to be careful with Sam because she's trickier because there's Naquita in her system, which is a big fucking clue that they are not good people. Yeah. Um, liars in all caps. Um, so then the woman, the creepy woman person asks, Sam, how they defeated Apophis. Well, at um, first they were like, they said something about, uh, oh yeah, Apophis did this, and Sam's like, Apophis is dead. And they're like, oh yeah, how did you kill Apophis? I was like, they were like, we need this in the fight into in the fight against Apophis, and Sam was like, yeah, but Apophis is dead. Which okay, to be fair, Apophis is probably not dead. Like that's not. That's a mistake on their, on Sam's end for, like, assuming that Apophis is dead when they sent his dead body back to Sokar, knowing that Sokar had a sarcophagus, and literally the Tokor were like, they're gonna fucking use a sarcophagus and bring him back. So, like, that's stupid on Sam's part for assuming Apophis is dead. Right, right. But also, their response to her response, sketchy. Yes, that was the sketchier part, I thought, for sure. (laughs) Oh, no, no. Yeah, I didn't think Sam was sketchy. I think I thought Sam was stupid. Um, yeah, they're yeah. sketchy. I mean, Sam- to be fair, if you're awakened from being cryogenically frozen, I'm going to give you a little leeway on what you say. Fair. I'm not giving the writers leeway on continuing oh. to fuck up their own things. Yeah, that's totally fair. Totally fair. Um, so then Sam has a flashback of going to the spaceship where they defeated Apophis the first time, which, again fuck the writers because that's not even when you killed Apophis. Right. I was like, I was like, this isn't even relevant right now. I was like, because that's Apophis. the first time they, de- they defeated Apophis quote unquote, but then Apophis came to the, like, I was like, and it's not like they forgot that that existed because they, they then show a flashback to Sokar. Right. Yeah. It was a, it was not a, a good use of flashback. No, it was not only was it a clip show, it was a, a, What's the thing where you accidentally cancel yourself out? Um, yeah, double negative. No, what is the man? What is that fucking word? Um, um, all I could think was every time they like went into their memories, they asked a question and then it never got answered for the like the SGC member or for the people that were asking the questions. It was like it just they just never discussed it again. It was like Jack, how'd you get cryogenically frozen? Here's seven clips that don't tell you anything. All right, let's go to Daniel now. Like, it's like, what, this, not, we're not moving forward. I don't know what words you're looking for. Um, nullify is the closest oh, yeah. synonym for what, like, I can say, but that's not the word I was thinking of. But, like, basically, they, like, voided out their own fucking points every time they showed a clip. Mm-hmm. Um, counterintuitive is not correct either. I don't, if anybody knows what word I'm thinking of, let me know, because I don't. Maybe um, I'll you in a second. Perfect. Um, so then we see Major T interrogating Daniel, and Daniel remembers, has a flashback of Sokar and Heror and Hathor, and it's basically like, 
Here are all the living Gawuld system lords that we know. Yep. <laughs> That's um, exactly what they said. Um, then they, all of the creepy people just keep telling everyone that they're the only ones alive. Um, and then Teal'c wakes up. And we're about to think that it's the exact same fucking situation all over again because the voice says the same thing. But it's not. It's actually Hammond and Fraser, and he is. That is the only thing that I thought was done well in this episode. This, yeah, the, the moment where Teal wakes up and you're like, what the fuck is going to happen now? And right. then it's totally not that. Yes, I agree. Oh. That was... Well done. Um, uh, I did put God bless Janet because Hammond says, you've been here for a bit. You were cryogenically frozen. And Janet was so worried about you that she never left your side. And that's probably the only reason you're still alive today. Yeah. God bless yeah. Janet. So yeah. Sad. So basically they're like, you're here, but you're by yourself. We don't know where the rest of the SG one is and he goes okay well then i'm gonna go back to the planet and find them and like him's like you can't do that and he's like watch me and he's like you were in a coma for three weeks and Tilk's like no 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 jaffas don't do comas <laughs> yeah um and then he says that janet like sat with him the whole time and that's the only reason he's alive um and teal is like okay well if sg one's gone i'm gonna go home And for a split second, I thought that these guys were also fakes because Hammond tries to argue with him. It was like, you can't do that. You can't go home. You're a security risk. And I was like, this guy is not fucking Hammond. But then it was just that Hammond was like, no, like, I I don't want you to go home, but I'm doing it by saying that you can't because I can't show emotion because I'm a general. Exactly. I don't have another uh, logical reason that's not emotional to tell you. Yeah. Um, so Teal'c is like, okay, I quit. And if I quit, then you're not my boss and then you can't tell me I can't leave. Right, right. Um, so then we leave the current SGC and we go back to supposedly future SGC and Jack is like squeezing the wires of his like weird dopamine drip thing or sedative. It's not dopamine. That's a sedative. Um, so that the sedative isn't actually like going into his body and he hears the fake people, uh, speaking. Yep. So then he escapes. Mm -hmm. As he should. Then we go back to earth. And Teal'c is wearing beautiful white, shining God-looking robes and tells Hammond goodbye. And there's an emotional moment before he gets in the cave. Yeah. And then don't worry, we won't address that again for the rest of the episode. No, we will not see anything more about that. And to be fair, it's a to be continued. It's a part one of an episode. And to be fair, that part... I'm fine with. Yes. Oh, no. I, I would have been fine. Even but, if it was the actual season finale and it wasn't a to be continued and it was a good episode, I would have been fine with them ending the season with Teal saying goodbye and leaving and then right. addressing that sometime mid next season even. Like, yeah. as much as I would miss Teal for the episodes that he wouldn't be there, I wouldn't even hate that as a storyline of them having to, like, reveal that they're still alive and go find Teal. Yes. I 100% agree. Um. So... Then Jack uh, gets, was walking around the base and he gets to a point where he like breaks through a door and finds the Gawold looking part of the ship. And he starts having flashbacks to the last time he was on a Gawold spaceship. And then his head starts hurting and he finally makes a connection to the fact that the weird thing that they have implanted in his head is fucking with his memories. Um, so then he finds Sam and, uh, She has a weird flashback to Jack almost dying, um, which I didn't know why that flashback. The other ones, I at least got why they were in there. Like, I didn't like them, but I at least got that it was like they were being interrogated. 
Right, right. And I guess that this is showing us that that weird thing in their head is still connected to their brain. Like, it's dumb. Yeah. dumb. Um, so then they find Daniel. Um, and they figure out that there's some kind of weird Gawold alliance, like, working together on the ship because some of the Jaffa are horse heads and some of them are serpent heads. Which we did know because Teal briefly mentioned that, but then said that that yeah. didn't make any sense. So he didn't, like, it's like, uh, we don't, nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Um, and they go to this gate room, but it turns out the gate is fake. And everything in the room is fake. But it all looks so real that they're freaking out. And they're like, who that works with the Gawold would have spent enough time on the base to have enough information to recreate this so well. And then they start freaking out that Apophis is still alive. And I just think that they're the dumbest fucking people (laughs) on planet fucking earth because Apophis spent most of the time he was in SGC unconscious with the actual dying Egyptian man being in control of the body. Right. And Hathor straight up fucking ran the base for a hot sec there, and you didn't even, like, think that maybe, maybe that was, um, who it was. Yeah, yeah. Because fun fact, it is. Right, right. Hathor's back! Yay! I mean, everyone's back in this episode. Everyone we've ever seen in this show. Um, when I looked at the cast list, I was like, the number one person after our our main seven was Sue Ann Braun, who played Hathor. And I was like, man, that's pretty high billing for a fucking flashback. And then I was like, oh, wait, nope, this is the episode she comes back. Not a flashback. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, obviously, everyone who's in the flashbacks is credited as being right. in this episode. But that but is not. not but she was higher than Tom. But, uh... Ben, what is it? Tom Butler. She was higher than Tom Butler, but obviously I did Tom Butler because I'd already talked about her. Um, but I was like, man, she got higher than him for a flashback. I'm <laughs> just kidding. No, um, she's got a real a real place in this episode. Correct. Also, this is not her first episode, so that kind of puts her higher just in the terms of recurring. Right, right. Um, usually if somebody's back for like their second or third episode, they sit like higher in the credits. Yeah. Um, so she starts attacking them for, and says that she wants like the Asgard, like to meet the Asgards and they won't back down. And then she's like, give me the numbers for the base code. And then they won't back down and they're not caving. And Sam's like, don't breathe. Like, don't, breathe her in or whatever and she's like let me tell you if that was still gonna work on you guys i wouldn't have wasted so much fucking time and energy on these goddamn brain machines like true true i was like like, as evil as she is she's also like super smart i was like i was like not only am i glad that they addressed that point because how annoying would it be if they just like pretended that that whole (laughs) brain thing hadn't happened even though they fucking showed it in the flashback Right, right. But second of all, I'm glad that they not only addressed it, but they also gave it a point for Hathor to be like, are you fucking kidding me? All the work I had to goddamn do? Um, yes. So then when they still keep not caving, she calls a Jaffa into the room and she's like, lucky for you, you're here at the perfect moment. And she pulls the Gawuld out of the Jaffa's stomach and was like, look it, he's fully mature and ready for a host. Which one of you is it going to be? And then to be continued and the season ends. <laughs> and those last three minutes with Hathor <laughs> were the best SG-1 episode since the, what was the really, really, really good one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like episode seven or eight or something? Oh, it was later than that. Um, the fifth race was episode 15. Wow. Um, that feels like a really long time ago. It does feel like a really long time ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is those three minutes were the best episode since 
episode 15. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Holiday. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, no, the Serpent Song was good, but it wasn't great. That would be a pop as one. Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was just okay. It was, it was, it was just okay, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, literally, the fucking, um, so episode 15 was the Asgard episode. That three minutes of Hathor at the end and the two minutes of Teal stuff in the middle is the best shit we've had since episode 15. And even if, even if we count the Apophis stuff as actually being worth it, that's still episode 19, like 18, 17 or 18. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was insane. Which I felt like they put some good stuff in the last clip episode too. And yeah. it was like, why are we why are we not making this the episode? <laughs> like Yeah. To be fair, this is something that a point that you know, never mind, because Doug brought up a really interesting point when I was talking to him about it on um Saturday or no yesterday whatever the fucking day I had this conversation with him yesterday and so if Doug is available to um record with us next week which I did talk to him about but he's got to figure out because he's supposed to be going to see Avatar um he's got to figure out what time he's seeing Avatar with his friend um and so if he's available to record next week I will have him comment on it and if not, I will just wait till next week to comment on it. But he brought up a really interesting point about the flashback usage in this episode or in this show that I would like him to elaborate on because I don't remember everything he said. Um, I could like just talk out of my ass and tell you mostly the points he was making, but like he's smarter than I am. So yeah, I will say I feel like now this episode has ended. Um, yes. So it was last episode was our time travel episode, right? Correct. So I feel like that was a good setup for what they wanted to do with this episode. Yes, I I had a note at the I had a note in my brain at the beginning that I was like, oh man, we just went back to 1969, and now we're going forward to 2077. Fantastic. Of course, like I knew that it was fucking bullshit, but like I didn't. But I also don't think I would have believed it had we not already time traveled because I didn't know if that was possible. Right. So, so they did a good job of, like, setting you up for that. Agreed. Agreed. I will give you that. Um, I have very, very few pieces of trivia, but I do have some trivia for you. Um, the device that Dr. Raleigh, who is the fake plastic gold girl lady, um, uses to calibrate the memory stimulation device is, in reality, an electric nose hair trimmer. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, the episode was inspired by the film 36 Hours from 1964, which I have never seen. I also have never seen um, it. When Colonel O'Neill is searching the base, he opens a door and finds only a wall, and his comment is damn cost cutting, which is likely an in joke to the fact that a clip heavy episode is usually produced to save production cost. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, and this is the first appearance of a CGI Gawold symbiote in the series. Up to this point, every time we've seen a baby Gawold, it's been like a weird prosthetic, yeah, like animatronic snake, nasty looking thing. This one was full CGI. It was the first time that we had that situation. Um we won't get into our thoughts on season two as a whole because that is what next week is for. But what are your final thoughts on this episode? I mean, basically what I was saying about I thought they set it up well and then I was so pumped. Even when it began, like after I got past my confusion of how it began. I was like, oh, 2077. Oh, we've set it up in the last episode. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. We're going in order. Everything is going to be fine. And then they, the first like race we brought up was the Nox. And I was like, great. We're going to talk about the Nox again. And like, I was just like up and up and up. And then I was like, I am going nowhere. There's, there is nowhere to go. And um, so I kept my, my spirits high for a, 
a while. And then I was like, this isn't, this isn't the thing that's happening for me. So um, Mm -hmm. I did not enjoy it as a season finale. Absolutely not. Um, I didn't hate it as an episode per se. Like I I did, but like there were bits and pieces that I thought were really good material. Um, I wish it would have been done differently. I don't like clip shows. And I think that having a clip show as a season finale is disrespectful to the fans. I think that's fair. Um, Because while I, don't always hate a clip show. I don't like it as a season finale Mm -hmm. because I feel like you're supposed to, first of all, it felt like they were introducing a lot of new stuff, um, which you shouldn't do for a season finale. I mean, you have to spice it up to like go into the next season, but like, like you said, the last three minutes did that fine by itself. We didn't need like new stuff. I mean, Mm -hmm. you could, you know, confuse us with the, the gold and like doctors or whatever. And you could send Tilk home, but like, that's all stuff, whatever. Yeah. But we have new technology. We're pretending like we're in a different year. It's all this stuff. And I was just like, it's too much. It's too you're much. trying too hard for something that has five minutes of actual content. Correct. Yeah, for sure. Um, on that note, mm-hmm. who do you want to punch? Half or. There. 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 I don't know that there is another correct answer. Um, I would like to find the... um, um, Major T slash Agent Kelly slash weird plastic fake looking man. I don't... I don't... He's got a punchable face. Like, I feel like I I wanted to punch him in everything. No, that's totally fair. Um, Um, Who's your MVP? Janet, because she saved Tilk. That's fair. Um, my MVP is Tilk because he saved the episode. Uh, no, well, <laughs> <laughs> same page. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So with that, unfortunately, this is not a very long episode of this podcast because um, it was a clip show. So we've already talked about everything that was in it. Right. Right. I also feel like our season finale episodes tend to be short because we're like revving up so much to talk about the whole season. And then we stop ourselves because we're like, no, we're going to do the season wrap up next week. And like, we don't need to get that deep into this in this moment. Right. Um, so this is a short episode, but it's fine. Cause it was not good. Um, but we are going to next week's episode. We are going to be wrapping up all of season two. Um, we will hopefully have a guest joining us. Um, and then, like I said, um, we've talked about this a little bit before. We'll go into it more next week, but we are going to take a weird kind of segue break. And um, we are going to be watching Stargate Origins, which is. Um, a web series that was created in um, 2018 to like give a flashback to Catherine's life. Um, And it is like um, short episodes because it's a web series. Um, And it was on Amazon. It is not currently on Amazon. Um, um, we'll we have to announce that next week. Where it's where it's. At. Yeah, we might. Well, also, we might have to wait till next week to announce where we're watching it because it might change six times between now and then. True. I will um, say when you said we were going to take a, a weird break, I was like, I don't remember we were taking a break. I thought you were talking about the show. The show is not taking a break. Do not do not fret, guys. Oh, no, no. Death and Aliens is not taking a break. Stargate is not taking a break. We are just kind of veering on a weird side tangent of Stargate. Um, which makes sense. Yeah. So um, with that, we are going to end this wonderful episode um and we don't forget that this week on thriller thursday we are not watching a new episode of bates motel 
it is um, horror movie week where we are watching the Blair Witch Project. And um, I'm curious what you guys are in for in that episode. So please, please check it out. Even if you don't watch the movie, Brianna. (laughs) Because I can't imagine Brie enjoying watching the movie. Um, But even if you don't watch the movie, watch the podcast. Because I'm sure, I'm sure we'll have things to say. I have so many fun facts for you. Um, Yeah. So if you want to give us your thoughts about this episode, um, give us some fun facts that we can share in our season two wrap up podcast. Um, Please reach out to us at deathandaliens at gmail.com or on all the social media at deathandaliens. If you find a place that is streaming Stargate without commercials, (laughs) um, please share that information. If it appears on Amazon for more than 20 minutes at a time, also please share that information. Um, If you have any other information you want to share with just me as a person, especially if it's Stargate information and it might contain spoilers, please share it with me, not with the podcast, because Courtney checks our socials and she doesn't know shit about what happens in the future of Stargate. Um, so you can do that by reaching out to me at E M K A Y underscore superstar. If you just want to talk horror or like whatevs Broadway, you can find me at C E cloud 13. And we will see you guys on Thursday for our thriller Thursday episode. Yay. Bye.